We're here at the Tornos factory in Moutier. Now, Brees, we're looking at a deco machine here. This is completely different to your Swiss Nano. Why do you need a machine like this? Well, it's a machine for big diameters. You go up to 42 millimeters in option without guide bush. So really a strong machine with free channel, lots of tool in it. Uh, we have on this one a turret that is sitting on B-axis, 12 position turret. So it's really a machine to manufacture the parts that are nearly impossible to manufacture on a, on a Swiss type place or were impossible to manufacture on the Swiss type place. But so I guess if you're looking for the volume on the Swiss type, but you don't want to go to a fixed head because you just lose all of that, all of that uh, productivity, this would be that nice sit in the middle, that nice machine in the exactly, middle. Exactly, exactly. And not to forget that with the guide bush, this machine has the possibility to make really long parts. We made, for example, as a demo part, a, a rather long nail with a 500 millimeter deep hole drilling in it. Uh, it was very unique. It was for the demo, for the sake of the demo, but we, we get some interest thanks to, thanks to DAS. And that's thanks to the turret that is sitting on a, on a Z-axis as well, 700 millimeter stroke. So that's pretty impressive. Yeah, so you don't often see a sliding head type bar feeder with a guide bush in, on one axis and then a, fix, uh, sorry, a fixed head type turret lathe as well. And can you just explain why, you've, why you combine those two configurations? Yeah, it's basically to, uh, to be able to, to do the, the most complex part. We, uh, we had basically to, to say with our Evodeco, sorry, we cannot make it, we don't have enough tool, we don't have enough stroke. And at one point, uh, the drawing were piling and we basically said, well, you know what, let's make a machine that can make those parts. And that was the Swiss Deco. That's really the machine of the impossible, uh, where we said that basically we don't want any limitation. We just want to do the best machine for the, for the more complex and the most in, intricate, per, intricate part you can find on the market. Okay, so what would you say to someone who's got a part they think is impossible to do in a sliding head? Would you say to them, you can do it on this machine? It's probably possible on the Swiss Deco, yeah. yeah. There is very few parts that you cannot make on the, on the machine. Given the, the, it's a free channel machine, but given the sheer number of tools you can add to this machine, you can go up to three tools per position on the, on the turret. You can nearly reach uh, 60 tools on, uh, on this machine. 60 tools? You yeah, don't get, not so you don't get Miller machines with 60 tools, do you? Yeah, that's, that's quite impressive for, uh, for, for this machine. And we have our team of specific development who, are, who is really ready to, uh, to pimp it up, to customize it to the customer needs. So the Swiss Deco can probably do it. And this is the pimped up Deco right here. This yeah. has got nine axes. Yes. It's got a gang on the front here next to the, the spindle for the for the kind of the main turning operations. And then why have you got a B axis here and three axes linearly on the turret? What, what is that for? Well, it's basically to, uh, to have the most liberty we can have. The, the turret gives you the possibility of storing a lot of tool on, on it. And then uh, with, those, with these tools, you can, with the B axis, basically manufacture all kind of, of shape possible. And you can use the turret on the main and on the counter spindle. So therefore, it gives you a really a lot of liberty in terms of, uh, of complexity of part you could manufacture on, the, on this machine. So you've almost got a five axis milling machine you with the, got that. the counter yeah. spindle yeah. and the main spindle, plus a little sliding head machine here on one, one side. Yeah. And all in a tight package. Now, how much have you tried to optimize the, the size for this machine as well? A lot, a lot. I mean, it was uh, we made consensus for the for the logistic, so that the machine is really very low and very compact. And uh, we have used basically the success of the multi Swiss was also its container. The fact that we have placed all the peripheral at the back. Here we have made also a, a concept that looked like that, where you have a paper filter, you have the high pressure, you can go to. 340 bars on the uh, in this 340 machine. Yeah, bar. Yeah, that's quite impressive, I know. And uh, you can basically pimp it up and uh, customize it as much as you want. And everything sits on the side of the machine. And it's, uh, I mean, for such a machine, it's still quite compact. Yes. You do. So you've got the bar feed. The material comes in this side. Yes. Gets ripped out. The material gets ripped out here and then sent straight out through the, exactly. the fourth conveyor. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And what about, I guess you need that 334, 340 bar, which I'm, I'm still amazed you get 340 bar here. I guess for that swarf evacuation, so this can be running lights out. Yep. Now, what have you done to make sure that this is going to be running overnight and people can trust that it's going to stay running overnight? Yeah, basically we have chosen the best peripheral we can, uh, we can find on the market. Uh, we have a very high-end uh, chip conveyor and everything has been set we have tried to achieve the, what we have called the zero maintenance. Of course, it's not zero maintenance completely, but the idea was really that the machine was 
if I may say, bulletproof in terms of, uh, of reliability and in, in terms of process reliability. You can have also, of course, the ACB Plus to, uh, to monitor your process and to, to break the chips on top of all the high pressure pump you can have on the machine. So it's really a machine that is, uh, that is not automatized, but that... Uh, it's as close as possible as you can get exactly. without being fully exactly, automated. Exactly, okay, exactly. and that's just investing in one product. You're not having to go for a robot, you're not having to go for some yeah. gantry loading system. What about, so this sounds like quite a complex machine to me. Mm -hmm. How easy is it to program? It's rather easy, in fact. We have the Tizis OptiMove on it. So basically, it's the same experience you will get on your PC uh, programming another autonomous machine. It's a free channel uh, machine. So it's pretty easy to synchronize the different, uh, the different path, the different channel. Uh, and the Tizis OptiMove has the possibility, it gives you the possibility to optimize the tool path. So basically, you you don't wear too much your machine, you save, an, you save energy and you are sure that you are at the fastest production speed you can, you can get. So it's pretty, uh, it's pretty easy to program. You have a library with operations that are standard, like a threading and so on, that you can basically drag and drop into your program. And when you start a program, all the feeding and uh, the ejection is automatically added to the program. So your machine can already cut bar in, uh, in reality without doing anything. That's amazing. So, bulletproof, easy to program, and it can do any part you throw at it. So, if you want to get a pimp top deco from Tornos, get in touch with David Dunn from Premier Machine Tools, supplied in the UK and Ireland.